All right, thank you all for watching. Today we're going to talk about Final Cut Pro 10 versus Premiere Pro CS6. Now the first question you're probably asking yourself is why are we doing this? Well, there's a few reasons. The first is our current suite will be over five years old by next term. Now there was a newer version, Final Cut Pro Studio 3, which came out. It had Final Cut Pro 7 in it in 2009, but we chose not to go with that because the cost did not really justify at the time the amount of new features that came out with it. Because of the changes in OS 10.7 and in the future with OS 10.8, which is called Mountain Line, the architecture that is required for Final Cut Pro 6 to be installed is no longer supported. So they switched over a few years ago from a PowerPC architecture to an Intel architecture. There was, for a short period of time, up until the current version that we're using, which is called Snow Leopard, the ability to use both PowerPC code and Intel code. In 10.7 and above, they're just using Intel-based code and the installer for Final Cut Pro Studio 2 or Final Cut Pro 6 is basically PowerPC code. We can't stay on Snow Leopard, which is what we're currently running for any longer because Apple's new release computers cannot be downgraded to 10.6. So the big question is, we're not going to move away from Macintosh, what are our options? Avid Media Composer, Final Cut Pro 10, and Premiere Pro CS6. Now because of proprietary formats and overall bang for the buck, we have eliminated the Avid Media Composer from the suite. So it's just between Final Cut Pro 10 and Premiere Pro CS6. Let's talk about the key features for each of these. One of the number one key features with Final Cut Pro 10 is autosave. So it, it is automatically saving every single edit and cut that you make. You don't actually have to save your project any longer because it's doing it for you. Next up is background rendering, whereas before in Final Cut Pro 6 and 7, you had to watch that render bar come up and you were just stuck there. Now the rendering is in the background. Database organization, including auto shots, which allows basically does the organization for you and the ability to auto-analyze and fix shaky shots and bowed sound. There's also this really unique function called the Liquid Timeline, which I will demonstrate in a minute, and the ability to audition different editing choices. Now let's take a look at Premiere Pro CS6's key features. One of the ones is a strong integration with After Effects CS6 and the rest of the Adobe suite. The tools are similar in all Adobe apps, so people coming from Illustrator, Photoshop, and InDesign are going to be very familiar with what the tools look like. Strong emphasis on keyboard use and shortcuts, facial detection, and a full workflow solution from script to screen has been integrated within Premiere Pro CS6. You can actually write all of your stuff in an Adobe application and edit it and finish it all the way through with the Premiere Pro and CS6 bundle.